This video covers how to take an existing complex model and prepare it for analysis in Sapphira. Now ideally you'd build a model so that it works in Sapphira using either the study model or smart model approaches, which we cover in other videos. However, that's not always the reality. Sometimes you end up with a model like this, often built for presentation or rendering purposes. And if so, you'll likely see an error message like this one in Sapphira indicating that you have too many planes. So what can you do to analyze this model? There are two approaches. You can try to tag the existing geometry, or you could try to build a simplified shell model. Let me dive into each one quickly. The first approach is to try to tag the existing geometry in order to analyze it correctly by hiding geometry that's not needed for analysis, such as the topography or the landscaping, and by tagging the remaining geometry correctly. For example, by making sure that all of the elements are uh, tagged as they should be interpreted in Sapphira. In this case, this surface should be a roof. However, this approach can be quite challenging. Models like this one often contain tens or hundreds of thousands of planes that need to be tagged correctly. In addition, it's also easy to miss critical elements. For example, this model is built with thick walls, and unless the interior portion of each wall surface is tagged as an interior wall, Sapphire will double count the amount of external wall area resulting in double the amount of heat gains or losses through the exterior envelope. Because of these challenges, we don't recommend this approach unless the model is already very simple. It is possible to set up a model in such a way that can, it can be used for both design and analysis purposes. We call that smart modeling and we cover it in another video. The second approach, and the one that we recommend, is to create a simplified model by tracing around the main model. You can keep the simplified version on a separate layer so that it's easy to compare against the main model and make updates as, as required. The process for creating that simplified model is actually fairly straightforward. I often begin by creating a layer called Sapphira on which we'll put that simple model. Then we'll take a section cut of the building in line with the floor plates. And essentially we'll trace around each floor plate, extrude it, and uh, that way create a simplified model. So let's start with, in this case, the ground floor. I'm going to pull this section down so it's close to the ground floor, and then I'm going to right click and create a group from that slice. Let's go back to our detailed model view. There's the new group that we created, and we can move that group down to the level of the first floor, and then go into that group. I'm going to hide the rest of the model quickly. And now what we're going to do is trace around the thermal envelope of the building. In other words, the boundary between the interior and exterior. Now, I often find that using guides can make this process go very quickly. Once you've traced the boundary of the floor plate, you can extrude it up to the height of the next floor level. Now you'll notice that I've kept this geometry as simple as possible. It's not necessary to capture small articulations on the facade. Remember that the energy model is really looking for the total amount of wall area and glazing area on each facade. Once we've extruded the walls, we can create glazing. Again, we can toggle back and forth between the main model in order to locate this in our simplified model. To create glass for the purposes of Sapphira, simply paint the surface 
with a material that has some transparency to it. And this will automatically be interpreted as glass. The default glass textures in SketchUp work very well for this. Once you've all added all of the glazing to the first floor, you'll want to delete out the original geometry from your section cut. You'll want to repeat this process for each unique floor. Once you've modeled each floor, add any exterior shading elements, such as balconies, eave overhangs, and any surrounding buildings that may provide shading on the main building. One tip when modeling shading elements, if you tag the element as a shading device before you copy it, you won't have to re-tag it each time it shows up. Now we have a simplified version of our model ready for analysis. As always, be sure to check the entity types before performing analysis and correcting any that are incorrect. A few specific things to check for is that overhangs and anything outside the thermal envelope of the building is tagged as shading. Make sure all roof surfaces are tagged as roof. And make sure that any small horizontal elements are not mistakenly tagged as floors. For example, these should be exterior wall elements. Finally, it's always good to isolate each type of entity individually to check that it is interpreted correctly. And now we're ready to analyze.